I told you I was going to make this as easy as possible. Ciao friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by. And I think this is part 7 of my Harry Styles cardigan, or any patchwork cardigan really. But this is a $1900 sweater that you can make according to my my pattern here and everything that I worked on you make this for less than fifty dollars more towards thirty five to forty isn't that crazy because I chose the big twist value from Joann's and it is very soft there's three hundred and eighty yards in each skein it's really soft it's comparable to like I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby or the Red Heart Super Saver but I think this is far softer than Red Heart Super Saver and sometimes it's cheaper so the price point is fantastic. Sometimes this can go on sale for as little as $2, which is amazing. And you need a total of 13 skeins to make a gigantic oversized patchwork sweater. So we're going to use Varsity Yellow. You need 18 yellow squares and this is a Suzette. You can find all of these squares on different videos. All six of them have been posted. But this is Varsity Yellow. We need 18 and this is a Suzette. And total you need to have two skeins of yellow. And we'll move on to green. This one is Varsity Green. It's a nice bright Kelly green. It's really, really fun. Again, big twist, super soft. You need 16 of this square, which is an Elizabeth stitch or the mini bean. That's what I designed here. And you need two skeins of this Varsity Green to make all the squares that you need. Plus you'll have some left over because you need to have a bit to put this whole thing together. And here's my orange. This one is actually called burnt orange, not just orange, it's burnt orange. It's kind of a pumpkin-y color. And here is my pumpkin-y orange, burnt orange square. This is a crochet pearl stitch. You can see the ridges right in here. And this you need 12 of these squares for this pattern. And so you only need one skein of big twist at 380 yards of the burnt orange. Here is our red square. This was a waistcoat stitch. That word is so hard to say. I just can't say waistcoat properly. But this is not varsity red. It's called deep red. It's a dark, little bit darker instead of being red. It's a little bit deeper red and I like this one better in the whole color scheme. And this one we need 16 red squares plus some of the jacquard. The red in the jacquard plus it's going to be the ribbing for your sleeves and for the bottom and for the collar. In total you'll want four of these. Four reds and these are 380 again. 380 yards. And here's our black square. Our black square is, um, this is a moss stitch or the linen stitch that I called the moss stitch or I've actually called it a mesh stitch before. See, so you can see through it a little bit when it stretches but not terrible. And this is black. You need 14 of these. You want three skeins of your black. Get really close with two, but I think you're going to ooze over just a little bit. So you're going to want to get three of them and you'll have some extra. For this one, we need the black and the red for our jacquard square. And you need to make 16 of these. And lastly, we need a blue and this one is cornflower blue. This will be for the trim, which is right here. You only need one of these because you don't need very much. You'll have some leftover of this too. You also need a four millimeter hook and a five millimeter hook, depending on which square you're making at that time because the different stitches that I'm using, the tension changes a little bit. So I have that all down in all of my other videos. This is my map or my diagram, my planogram, whatever you want to call it. But so here's our back panel, left front, right front, left sleeve, right sleeve. And then there'll be ribbing here, here, and here. And there'll be a cuff and a ribbing here and here. And then we'll put a collar on last. I'm going to show you how to join these together. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks. All right, so for example, we'll just put together this one right here, this line of three. And then this line of three. We will connect those together. So you can see I need an orange. And this is the right side, this is the side that should show with the ridges. And there's the green and there's the red. And then the next one up is a green. And the jacquard is blank. And a yellow. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Right now I'm going to join all these together and I'm going to show you 
the easy way to do so. We want to be working on the wrong side or on the inside. Work on the inside. So what we want to do is just go like this. Flip these around, flip these around and make sure that you have the right side and not the wrong side. The wrong side should be up. Some of these do not matter, but the jacquard does and so does the orange. So now we're on the inside. And also, when possible, when you are working on anything that's an edge, so this will be, these are the bottom squares right here. These are the bottom squares. You want to go with where you first started and cast on undid all your chains. Have that to the outside. So all of my chains were here. This one was, all of my chains are here. And with this one, all of my chains are here. Right on the outside. So that's what we want to do. So firstly, I'm going to show you this. I'm using my five millimeter hook to hook all of these together and I'm going to use the red. You can use whatever color that you have the most of left over because remember all of these are 19 across. Every one of them started with a chain of 20 and in the 19 single crochets. So this will be really, really easy. All right, so we are going to put these together and we're going to do it in a way that really won't show. So it doesn't matter what color you choose. I'm using red, so it definitely will show up here on the inside so you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, so we are going to join our yellow and our green right now. And I'm going to go through the front loop on the green one and the back loop of the yellow one. So the loop that's closest to you and the loop that's the furthest away and we want to fasten on our red. And we'll pull through and do that all the way down. We want to go through the first, the closest loop and the furthest loop. Yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch through the closest and the furthest. Working on the inside, remember. And do that all the way down. The closest loop, which is the, the front loop on the green, and the furthest loop, which is the back loop of the yellow, and slip stitch for all of these 19 stitches. This makes it very easy to get everything lined up. So there's the front and there's the back loop. Pull through and slip stitch. There's the front and the back. Yarn over, pull through and slip stitch all the way down. And there's the last two. We go through my front loop and the green and the back loop of the yellow. Yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch. And here's my last one. My number's 19. Front loop, back loop of the yellow. Yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch. So now we have these two attached. This is the inside. But here's the outside. It doesn't show and it's nice and straight. So there you go. I think that's perfect. I was very pleased with the way this turned out. So now when we move on to the next ones, I'm going to use the red and remember if wherever we started, if there is an outside part, if there's an edge like this, if we're at an edge, try to put the one that where you started your chain in your very first row. Try to do that one facing out. If you remember, it would be great because it will be very helpful. And I'm going to do the jacquard. So to make sure that the jacquard is wrong side up and you'll be able to tell because one side just looks prettier than the other side. So this is the wrong side, this is the right side. We're going to go wrong side up. And we are going to continue doing exactly what we were doing the first time. So I'm going to go through the front loop of my red right here and then continue right on. And the back loop of this jacquard. And we are going to pull through and slip stitch. The 
front loop, the back loop, pull through, and slip stitch. So the loop that's closest to you and the loop that's furthest away, yarn over, pull through, slip stitch. For all of these stitches. There's my last two stitches through the front of the red, through the black of the back black loop, slip stitch, and here's my last, very last stitch. On these this, these two squares will be joined. Ray. So there you go. Now we're joined. And again, you can turn it over, and it doesn't show. You just have a nice straight line, which is so cool. I like that. And then you would just continue that for the next two, which is orange and a green. Now on the orange, you want to make sure the wrong side is up. The right side is the one with the ridges, because this is a crochet purl stitch. This side doesn't look like very much. This is the inside. So then you would just keep going. And again, I'll show you how to do that one more time. Just continue on. We want to take our right from where we ended here. There's our front, our front orange loop and the back green loop. Pull through and tighten it up a little bit and slip stitch. And again, for all of the stitches, the front stitch on the orange and the back stitch on the green. Easy peasy. So this makes a nice straight line so you won't get all the way done with one panel and go, oh no, I'm off and everything's kind of lopsided or they're not lining up very nicely. This will help everything line up. Front and the back, and there's my very last stitch. There's the front of the orange and the back of the green. Pull through and slip stitch. And now we can finish this off. Leave yourself a little bit so it doesn't come undone. Alright, so these are connected on the inside with just a slip stitch, and on this side it doesn't show. Isn't that neat? This side doesn't show and it's a nice straight edge and I'm going to show you the panel that I am currently working on so that you can understand why I did what I did. Alright, so here everything is connected. This is the outside view. Everything is connected now and they're all lined up from top to the bottom. They're all lined up nicely. Like this. They're all lined up nicely. And then I put on the top and the bottom, I did one row of red. Used my red here. And I did the back loop only to make another nice straight line because almost everything is going to be either have ribbing or part of the collar or something on it. So we just did a nice edge in red. So we'll be able to attach those later. And now you can see these are all open in between because we haven't gone vertically yet. We just went horizontally with all of these squares, but they're all connected. Very nice corners, very nice joins, very nice joins here. So then what you can do makes this part a lot easier. On the inside, now you just stitch these together. Use whatever yarn you wanted to. I'm using red here so it shows, so I can show it to everybody. I'm using my red here. I would, going further, I would use at least one of these colors. I would use yellow or green for this one. If you wanted to blend in a little bit better, I would use like the yellow or the green for this section and the black for this section and either orange or red for these two sections, whichever one. But I'm using red right now just so it shows. 
So we're just doing a slip, I'm just doing a little stitch, and I'm staying on the top, not going all the way through, so it doesn't show very much. If you're a stickler for having things show, you can keep it from showing pretty easily, like I did here. It doesn't show very much. If you don't care, then just stitch it together. It gives it some character, I think, if random stitch shows every once in a while. But you just sew, sew this together in whatever way is easiest for you to stitch these together. No special way. Okay, I am just stitching them together. Like that all the way up. This is the vertical way. But you see the horizontal ways are keeping your nice corners right here so you don't come up to the end and find out that you're off a little bit. Same with this one. This closed off the edge and this one closed off the edge. So you just have all these little flaps that you need to sew shut. Easy peasy. So now you can see these are joined. This one is partially joined but it's not done yet. But these are joined together and you can barely see it. If you want them to show, then you can use any stitch that you want to to have the stitches show. So that part is really any way you want to do it. And this is one of my front panels. I have to sew all these up, see, peekaboo, to sew all those up this exact same way. But that's pretty easy. Once you did the horizontals and keeping everything in line, the rest of it is just stitch, stitch, stitch. Really easy stitches. And then next week we will look at some ribbing for the front panels. They're going to have ribbing on the bottom. We have cuffs to do. We have the front ribbing, the back ribbing, and a collar, the blue buttons. We have all those other parts to do. You can use any yarn you want. Of course, I'm doing the Harry Styles patchwork, but you can use any patchwork, any colors for whatever patchwork scheme you want. But I have two girls that want a Harry Styles sweater, so I'm making two of these. So there you go. I've got a lot more squares to make. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back soon and we're going to put this bad boy together. Thanks. Bye.